What's up everybody, DLifeHD here, and today I will be reviewing Runic Rampage for iOS. But it's also available on Android, Steam, and the Amazon App Store. I'm a huge fan of hack and slash games, and I love that it reminded me of Gauntlet Legends from the N64 and Dreamcast days, with a touch of World of Warcraft. So, if you're a fan of anything I just said, join me as we discover if this game is worth your $5. First, let's discuss modes. There's only one mode in this game, and that's story mode. But, there is a setting I want to talk about, and that's the graphical settings. In fact, I'm seeing this more and more in mobile games, and I love it. It takes advantage of more powerful devices like the iPad Pro, the new iPhones or new Android devices like the Note 8 or the Razer phone, while also having the option to turn down the graphics, which is the way mobile games need to be so they can capture a wider range of devices. It also has the option to turn down audio and music so you can play your own tunes while playing the game. You also have a wide variety of languages to choose from. With that said, let's talk about controls and gameplay. The game doesn't have a dynamic joystick, but you get used to it after a bit with minimal errors. There were only a few times when that messed me up. The game also comes with two buttons on the right, a normal attack, and a strong attack. There are also times when you have to press and hold the strong attack button to unleash special attacks. You can also tap the normal attack button to dash. There's only one change I would like the developers to make, and that is to have the ability to have a separate dash button. It gets in the way at times when you don't tap it right and you do a normal attack instead of a dash. They could also add the ability to customize controls, that would be really cool. Luckily, the game is also M5 certified, so if you have an M5 certified controller, you can also use that as well. I'd like to also add that if you have an Apple TV, that you can play it on the big screen. So, you can play it on the go on your iPhone and iPad and then get home and play it on your big screen too. Take that, Nintendo! <laughs> the gameplay is super fun. It provides you with four playable acts and your mission is to retrieve all the missing runestones. I'll get more into that into the story portion of this review. Each act has three levels and a boss. Each boss is really interesting, each provides a certain level of challenge and a different way to defeat each boss. It's super cool. Each act has a different environment and different types of baddies to completely and utterly demolish. <laughs> the more you attack and beat baddies and the higher your combo gets, the more gruesome your attacks become. But because it's cartoony, it's oddly satisfying. Probably not suitable for kids though. Each baddie that you defeat will either give you coins, health, or power-ups. Trust me, there are times where you'll be like, I don't want your stinking coins or power-ups, give me some dang health! Don't tell me I didn't warn you. At the end of every level, there's a treasure chest guarded by hordes of enemies. After you defeat them, you get to loot the treasure chest and get coins, jewelry, which you convert into coins, and clothing. You'll use all these to upgrade your attributes, weapons, spells, and armor sets. This is where the RPG elements come into play. I'm not gonna lie guys, I was so into this game and I didn't rest until I pretty much had everything you could get. I loved it. In the end, you could end up with a super cool dwarf that looks kinda like this. Design and graphics. First, let's talk about interface design. The design of the interface fits. I think it could have been a little cleaner, I'm not the biggest fan of bevels, drop shadows, and gradients, but it does have that rustic look that fits the medieval scenery and timeline of the game. When you go into the upgrades panel, I find that sometimes when you swipe to scroll on the left and right side of an item, it won't respond to your finger. I can see why it does that on the left, because you tap on the left to choose an item, but you should be able to not only scroll in the middle, but also have that responsive scroll on the right side. On the X menu, I do appreciate that there's more than one way to get around the game. You can either swipe up and down to scroll through each act, you can use the up and down arrows on the right, or you can use the act one through four buttons on the top. That's a nice touch. The buttons are super responsive. I absolutely love that they tell you the story through hand-drawn art. It just adds a bit of personal touch to the game. 
Um, when I was in design school, I always appreciated when people used fine art in their projects instead of just stock design and photography. It just adds that bit of personality that you wouldn't otherwise have. All right, guys, let's talk game graphics. This is where the nostalgia kicks in. Uh, this game looks and plays so much like the N64 and Dreamcast Gauntlet Legends game. So needless to say, your device should be able to run this game pretty easily. The graphics are not those realistic graphics of top tier mobile games, but that's what makes it so endearing. The characters and graphics also kind of remind me of when World of Warcraft was released in 2004. Tons of nostalgia triggers for those of you who have played those games. Music and sound. The music is a mixture of renaissance type music and battle anthems. It's nice and it fits the environment and time period that the game is set at. The music changes slightly to fit the different type of level environments and when you get into battles and fight bosses it changes slightly as well. It picks up in tempo and intensity. The fighting sounds are super cool. When you're fighting there's a difference in sound between a dry hit and when blood comes into play. Then, when the crazy carnage starts happening, the sounds change as well. Sounds are more, um, squishy? <laughs> when you hit the enemies, they each have different sounds. Some are a little more humorous than others. <laughs> what I was missing a little was the voice acting. There is none, but I guess it kind of fits the whole storybook feeling of the game, so reading subtitles doesn't seem too bad. Last, but certainly not least, story. So the story starts like this. Grimbard's town is in danger and everyone is suffering from disease, so the old man tells him to go to the castle and find something that can heal their people and their town. He then finds a piece of the runestone. Apparently, legend has it that the runestone was handed down from dwarf king to dwarf king and that the last king to have it broke tradition and upon his death gave the runestone to his four sons, who after his death fled and were never seen again. After every boss battle that you finish, you discover a new Dwarvian power source that was lost and a clue as to what you'll find in the next level. As we get more into the story, you find out that one of the sons stole the runestone and fled up to a mountain where the other three sons chased him and they battled. Upon his shorty feet, a mage appeared and told him that if he could get a little piece of the runestone, that he would make him the sole king of the dwarves. So out of greed, the brother destroyed the runestones and spread the particle of it all over the kingdom. The dwarf nation then started to get attacked and their empire started to crumble because they were weak without the runestone. So, as a dwarf yourself, your mission is to go to these four kingdoms, retrieve the runestones, and ultimately defeat the mage who is the holder of the last piece. So the question is, can you do it? Can you help Grimbald save the kingdom from shore destruction? I know I did. Now it's up to you. I'm not going to tell you how the story ends because that's for you to find out. Now go out there and be somebody! <laughs> all in all, I loved playing this game. I'm a huge fan of the hack and slash beat em up type of games and this one is a really good one. And not to mention it has a decent story that ties your purpose and mission together. I appreciated that. It's got a pretty robust upgrade system and the whole story will take you about 8.5 hours. The game is challenging and I find that amazing. So the final question is, is this worth your $5? In my opinion, definitely. So, final verdict, this game is absolutely D-Life HD approved. Alright my beautiful peoples, thanks for joining me. Let me know if you want any tips and tricks for defeating the bosses, and if you need me to put out a walkthrough of this game, I basically 100% this game, yeah, I couldn't put it down. Let me know by commenting below if you agree with me or my opinions. If you like this video, remember to smash that like button because it really helps me out a lot. I'm also adding Amazon affiliate links in the description for things like Steam, Apple App Store, and Google Play Store gift cards just in case you plan on buying this game or other games that you need. For every purchase you make, I get a little bit in return and that helps the channel out a lot. If you want more content like this, remember to subscribe because I release mobile content like this pretty often. Love you guys and peace.